So I guess I should start by saying I'm not, I don't have a very traditional studio practice. I never really have. Um, you know, I make props and I make um, things that have use within projects, either event-based or videos or whatever, but I'm not, um, I don't work in a traditional artist studio. And I think that I was early on in art school really attracted to a more multimedia at that time, new media, they called it, we can call it the media formerly known as new media, <laughs> um, because it seemed to be a great open-ended way to encapsulate a lot of different ideas. So for me, I really start with the idea. I've always been more of a conceptual artist, I guess, in that way. I look at things that maybe people take for granted and I start asking questions about that. So, but yeah, it usually starts with a question or a confusion or a curiosity. There's a project I did about a, about a year ago called All That The Rain Promises. And there's a mushroom in the woods or there are types of mushrooms in the forest called polypores that grow off of dead wood, off of stumps of trees and they look like shelves. And so I just kind of had this image connect in my head that that's almost like a speaker uh, mesh on a kind of a microscopic level. And so I, I ended up doing a 3D scan and built kind of speaker, they're like speaker cabinets. And then I made an audio installation with these with these mushroom speakers. And so when I did this in a, in a gallery, I did it at GOKA at ECCS, I made them pure white so that they almost look like they're emerging out of a white gallery wall. And, and the audio, it's my voice over Chris playing the harmonica, my voice reading off the, the Latin names of these uh, 24 white sport agarics from the book Studies of American Fungi from 1900. Well, to step back, I think I've always been really interested in trying to find ways to insert art experiences outside of the um, formal art viewing, like sanctioned art spaces like museums or galleries, because I think there's a lot of potential there for the creative mind is activated when you don't have an easy explanation for what you're looking at. Um, and so I was really thinking about that for a long time and the way that I achieved that was usually event-based um, projects, participatory projects. One project I did uh, in 2008 with a collaborator named Robin Hewlett when we were living in Pittsburgh. We organized a community intervention into the into the street view mapping of a single street in Pittsburgh. And we thought, well, what would happen if we knew it was coming? What would we do? What if we chose to be a part of that? How would we choose to present ourselves? And we were also interested in this idea of like people assume when you see a car on the street, a Google street view, or even just thinking about documentary photography, you assume what you're seeing is real, is based in, that is all happening in the world, trying to kind of uh, if people happened across this street to start questioning, what are they looking at? Could this, was this really happening? Were all of these things really happening at the same time? Is this the most exciting street in the world or, or is something else going on here? So starting to question the larger structures in play. I really liked that format of like the live community engaged project in real time, but then the document lived on in on the internet, in Google Maps. It was embedded in the world somewhere in the digital space. For a long time, I was really trying to accomplish things like this, right? Um, and often I kind of went towards the spectacle. And I think in the recent years, and I think mushroom foraging has taught me this, that uh, like there's so much wonder in the world around us of th um, in the small quiet things that were easily ignored that are under our feet, yet we don't even pay attention to them if we, unless we tune in. And I'm starting to kind of go a different direction there. Um, um, introducing people to that way of kind of slow focus, um, you know, uh, kind of meditative looking, uh, slow observation and slowing down. I think that's really important right now. And at least that's the way maybe I've been dealing with the current state of the world. but. I do think that I still, like with some of the work I've been making lately, that's something that I want viewers to experience through art, but also, you know, perhaps they can take that back out into the world. And I think that has been kind of the impetus for me to kind of 
start slowing down and tuning in a little bit more into on a maybe a microscopic uh, space as opposed to this big spectacle space. My name is Ben Kinsley. I'm an artist. I live in Colorado Springs. I'm an assistant professor and co-director of the visual art program at UCCS. And I'm also an amateur mycologist and president of the Pikes Peak Mycological Society.